Yeah, thanks very much. Yeah. Good evening, everybody. Yeah, thank you for coming out. Um, uh, yet again, thank you to our fans, you know, for the unwavering support from match day one through 34, plus these playoff games. Um, I think we've grown. We've grown as a group. We've grown as a unit. Um, and all we wanted to ask for today was to see our signature. And, and I think that's what we saw, you know, to go, you know, fighting into this last game and to show a commitment and a belief and, and to show some character getting into this one. And uh, credit to the boys, you know. Um, they never let a moment get away from them, um, and they always bounce back. So, yeah, bigger picture, uh, we fall short today, but we grow for tomorrow. Um, and I think that's for us, you know, what's been a, an exciting year. It's been a year where we've been challenged and we've managed to come out on top, and uh, we grow one step further. We've, we've had so many highs and, and a few lows um, that we grow from, right? Um, unfortunately, we just couldn't recover from this little moment that we were in. Um, but what I saw today gives me hope gives me hope for the future um, and gets me energized and excited for us to come. So, you know, congratulations to my team for, for emptying the tank for me every single day. The staff uh, that you guys don't get to see behind the scenes, um, you know, it's a culmination of, of a body of work that, you know, countless hours go into it. And, you know, it hurts now. Um, we'll, we'll be sad for, you know, a couple of hours and 24 hours and get back together. and. Make sure we come back stronger, but this is a nice growing moment for us as a group and, and know where we need to improve because, uh, yeah, in life things don't go all your way all the time. So for us, uh, we have to look forward. Thanks, Coach. Uh, we'll kick it off with Tom first. Brad, is this kind of indicative of the arc of the season that, you know, at the start of the year, getting in, you know, everything you accomplished would have seen as amazing, and now even getting to the playoffs, but now losing in the first round is so devastating after the way you built up sure but even season. even even in this round of the playoffs I saw growth right mm -hmm. so from what we've meistered in the in the regular season right mm -hmm. um, and then to learn in round one to put it forward in round two I think you saw a different team out there tonight right I think you mm -hmm. saw a different energy out there tonight I think you saw a different mentality out there tonight so we learn right so credit to Sporting KC and congratulations to them um, it hurts to lose to them um, but I know this is a high-level opponent, right? And I know we'll have to work much, much harder to get the better of them in a playoff game. So uh, were we at that level? Not right now. Um, but you can see in two rounds we got better. Um, and that's all I want to see as a coach. Next we'll go to Dylan Butler. There might be a lag. Thanks, John. Um Uh, an exchange you had with Peter Vermees at the end of the uh, of the match, it, it seemed uh, like you were perhaps touched by it. Is it can you share um, perhaps what was said there? Um, and, and also, would you still deem this um, season a, a success? Obviously, in American sports, so much is is predicated on playoff um, failure or success. Yeah, Thank good, you, good question. Thank you so much. I mean. Listen, I think you can always, you know, create a narrative to say 34 match days are the most important because, you know, I applied my trade for many, many years playing that system, right, or playing that way. I'm fully embraced in the American system and I fully believe in the American system. So, you know, yes, we get ourselves into a position into playoffs, right, um, against all odds and, and we learn and we grow and we've, we've done so much as a group and, and just to see the growth of the human beings, the individuals around us, um, just to see us get better every single day and the willingness to get better every single day, you know, that we get to the playoffs there um, and we fall in a, into, a, into a funk um, and we fight our way back out and, and we show a performance like tonight. Gives me hope um, and like I said, it, everything's not a one-way street, uh, you know, in life you have to dodge some traffic um, and you have to, you know, become a little bit more skilled and developed one more step forward. So, you know, that's part of our growth as a group. We're looking at this much bigger picture, you know, from, from where we were to, to what we have created now. We have so much on our plate next season. Next season is going to come around really quickly. Um, there's a lot of planning to do. You know, we go into, you know, the Champions League next year early. So, again, we're excited about what the future brings. Um, and we know we're going to have a target on our back. So we're going to have to use those moments to grow now, to know exactly what's going to be thrown at us um, and put those steps forward. So. You know, I have a lot of respect for Peter Vermees, um, what he's done over time here uh, at Sporting KC, the culture he's created, the environment he's built. Um, so, you know, there's a few clubs within the league that, you know, are of high caliber. Um, and, uh, yeah, you know, 
I think he meant what he said uh, when he said, you know, just to see the type of game that this was involved in tonight was a really high level game and something that he's very rarely seen in terms of, you know, what challenges we posed to them on the night. So, you know, very complimentary. Yes, it's flattering. Um, it's easy to give those compliments when you're the winning team. But uh, I think, like I know Peter, I think he meant that. Next, we go to Corey Miller. Coach, just what was the locker room like after this one? What was your message to your guys after a year filled with so many highs? Just pretty much what I've said now, you know. So we had a couple of messages. Um, obviously, the boys are down, right? Um, deservedly so. They left it all out there tonight. So they, we could see, you know, the minute we started playing without the tag on our back, um, we played free. Um, and that's what we wanted, right? So we, we, we got what we asked for, right? We knew exactly how this game should be played and put it on our terms. And I think for many moments, we did. Um, and, and that was, you know, Excellent on my boys, right? So that the message is somber, that the message is small picture, disappointed, but big picture, just how we've grown as humans, um, as pros, as players. Um, you know, there's been so many life experiences and lessons learned on and off the field. Um, and I feel we are one step stronger than we were uh, this evening. So as a group, uh, we will come through succeeding. Um, and again, it's just, it's sad now in this moment, but I think uh, we have to, we have to look at the big picture. Um, the way Celio Pompey comes on the field, sparks some energy, you know, the way Nico comes in, the way Indy Vasile starts the games, the way we've grown, you know, through through guys and ask them at the worst of times to step in and, and now get off the ground and kick kick off the ground like running, you know. Um, we try to spark a mentality when we got challenged pre, you know, in June roundabout when we went, uh, you know, we hadn't lost a game, or we hadn't won a game in three. So we go to Sporting KC. Um, and we have an energy there and we turn a result around and that sets us, you know, f gives us momentum for the next few weeks and months. Um, that type of effect we were hoping for tonight. And I think for the large part, we got just what we wanted. How do you hope St. Louis remembers this first season of St. Louis City SC? Yeah, I think the connection with, with the fans and I think the connection with the players. I think uh, the signature of our team. I think what we stand for and what all the fans stand for, right? So what they stand for in the stadium and they don't want to sit down because we bring an energy and, and we want to bring that over 34 games plus. Now for us to grow, we've got to bring that 34 games and more. So, you know, we just have to thank the fans. It's been amazing. It's been no one knew where it's going to go and how it's going to develop. But what this has developed into is, is something that, you know, many clubs can uh, be jealous of. And, and I'm proud to be part of this club. Jacob, uh, what did Sporting KC do so well against you tonight, but especially the last two games? Yeah, the last two games, I would say tonight, not as much. You know, I think different starting lineups of theirs uh, influenced the game a little bit in the last week's game. Um, a little bit more directional, a little bit more vertical, a little bit more based on the second ball game, right? Um, and, and usually that's our DNA. Uh, but we just couldn't handle it on that day. We just lost critical moments and we give away f four dead balls, right? Dead, dead set balls, right? So two goal kicks, a throw in and a corner kick, right? So um, yeah, that, that's basically what the difference was last week. Kevin? What do you think, Bradley, happened in the last four match days? You know, all losses and particularly. You know, yeah, I think it's a good question. I think I just answered it. You know, a few seconds earlier, like playing. You know, playing like number one. Carry something, right? We got to get used to carrying that baggage on our back. We got to get used to it, and the way to get used to it is playing like you're number two. Um, so, you know. I compliment my team. Like I said, we've been challenged so many times throughout the year, um, and we've hit reset buttons and got back to playing like number one, uh, playing like number two, to stay at number one. And and that's you know, what in the last couple of games, we just yeah we just struggled to take that next step as a team together, right? Um, we just struggled to take those steps forward, of moments of growth and development. Um, so now we have those moments in our in our in our armory, uh, and we'll put those to good use next year. And do you know with a lot of these guys are this is their first experience in in, in this kind of situation? Yeah. Just uh, um, what do you think they've learned from it, and how do you think that this will be applied next year, and you know hopefully making another run for you? Guys? Yeah, one hundred percent. I mean, we have full belief in what we what we've done here, right? We've shown intent, and we've shown growth as a group, and we've shown quality as a group too, right? So, from 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 a bunch of we've always said everybody's nobodies right to be sitting here in a playoff match in year one and to have won the western conference in the regular season so you know there's a lot of things going our way um based you know we've always 
been in a team concept, right? We've always wanted to do right by the person, play with principles, uh, play with a person, uh, purpose, and bring passion, right? So um, these guys have done an amazing job, right? And, it, and you take a guy who's been in the college system, or you take a guy who's been in the next pro system, and now you put them on the highest soccer platform in the US, and we've thrived, and we've grown, and we've added commitment to a team concept, and the boys have come through with flying colors. So yeah, just again, immensely proud of this group. Next we go to Ben Hockman. Hey Bradley, um, uh, you made a bold decision to go with three new defensive players tonight. Uh, just overall, what can you share about what you saw from your defense tonight? Good, committed, you know, I saw guys emptying the tank. I saw, you know, everybody giving their everything to get this W on, on the line, right? So to try and turn the series around. And for the most part, we saw exactly what we needed to see, right? Um, yeah, I, I can't fault the team for the application on the night. It, it went exactly to how we wanted it to go. Unfortunately, the, the result, right? So, um, but again, we knew we have confidence in our roster, Ben. You know, we have confidence in everyone up, and we've always prided ourselves on the next man up mentality. Um, and we've done it numerous times and been rewarded so many times. Um, you know, I think this lineup or, or this back line was 6 0 going into this game. So, again, full confidence in the group full confidence in the group that was playing prior to that and full confidence in the group going forwards. Um, we've shown it and proven it that, you know, this, this recipe works. The way we do things work. The way we grow together as, as humans and, and as pros. It's, it's, it's a, right now it's a proven concept over 34 match days in a regular season. Can we get it to be a proven concept in the playoffs? Next we we'll go to Matt Baker. Hey coach. Wondering, uh, what was it that you saw that led you to sub Salio in for Sam at the half? I think we saw the, the ineffectiveness of Sam, but what made Salio the right uh, decision? And can you speak a little bit to his overall performance and how he might embody that growth that you spoke of regarding your team? Yeah, I mean, it, really good, right? So, I mean, and I've, I speak about growth all the time, you know, and we seem to forget, you know, and, and we think that, you know, we... we, we we give the keys to the kingdom to Klaus. We give the keys to the kingdom to Sam. But yeah, we're still, you know, growing. We are, we are getting to a place where we are comfortable. We are getting to a place where, you know, we try the two striker system. We try um, bring it on a cellular. We try different mechanisms. You know, if you think about the first goal um, here at KC or the goal where we get back in the game, right? The Sam, the ball over the top, you know, Sam gets in behind and, and scores. So we, we had a lot of those in sort of moments envisioned in our game plan, right? Getting in behind, getting Sam on the move. Unfortunately, it didn't come to fruition as much as we'd like. So that was hence the move, right? So can we get it now, you know, in, in their half, but controlled, controlled in their half, you know, progress the ball, get it to Celio. We know Celio is a weapon one versus one. We know he brings a lot of the dynamic in our attack, you know, with Celio, we're always growing to get him both sides of the ball. We always have to work with him, you know, coming back in the game and being part of the group defensively. So Celio has helped us in many, many moments. I think he's grown um, and outperformed what we've ever thought of expected of him. So we're excited to be seeing where Celio is at. We're excited to be seeing where Sam is at, right? Joa comes in and gives us tons of energy, creates a different dynamic in the game, you know. So people and players being responsible and, and sort of, acceptable or acceptance of the roles given on the game day so we saw a complete commitment to what we did today and that was great to see we got time for two more we're going to go to john lupo and then finish with tom timmerman uh oh, bradley forgive me if this is been asked already but you want this maybe share a little bit of what you said to the team after the match and for yourself you talking about the growth that the team has made but for you as a coach being a head coach at this level for the first time can you talk about how you feel you've grown during the season what adjustments you've been able to make and also maybe the growth you think you can make going into next season now that you have this experience of winning the west yeah. being in the playoffs having sort of a target on your back in the playoffs yeah i mean you know i don't i don't look too much at my you know, at my pathway, I don't look too much about my growth. I just, I just, I think you need to judge my growth on the growth of the team. You know, um, I think that's the most important thing, how you can judge what, what I've done as a coach and what my team behind me and, and supporting me has done. 
um, as, as coaching staff, right, who, who you guys don't get to see and, and they don't get the credit. But, you know, those guys, uh, I'm nothing without them. So just making sure that, you know, for me, my journey is about, you know, giving a platform, providing development for players to grow, um, not just on the field, but also off the field. So, and, and I've seen leaps and bounds of growth. So, again, you know, I never get too high, never get too low. Um, I just try and stay in the moment. Um, but, yeah, listen, when it's all said and done, you know, I think in a week's time, I'll sit back and reflect and, and just think about what you asked me. Wrap up with Tom. Brad, what was the impact of them scoring right before the half? Those are always... You know, not great goals. To, yeah. And and how did you feel about the first half? You were obviously more aggressive, but you still don't think got a shot on goal. Yeah, then. but we played the game where we needed to play the game. You mm -hmm. know, we played the game, and we didn't fall into the trap of last week's game. So mm -hmm. again, we we did exactly what was needed. And I mm -hmm. saw the clock at 43 minutes. We have a corner kick, right? Mm -hmm. So we have the ball, and then all of a sudden, you know, we're defending 30 seconds later, and we give away a set piece, and, and the ball's back down our end. So, mm -hmm. you know. These are just moments, you know, moments and, and defining moments at that, right? So, um, yeah, again, we, we, we will find ways to control games more. We will find ways to become a lot more ruthless. We will find ways to, to instill our signature and dominate in moments like this, right? Big playoff moments, big moments for our club, big moments for our fans, and big moments for us as, as a group, right? So, again, we use these to take two steps forward. Coach, thank you for joining us. We appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Thanks for everything. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.